You know what it is? No, let's have the we're, confrontation. We're, we're rolling. Let's have no. the confrontation. Esther and I, there's no. something I have to say to you, Esther. There's been issues, okay? There's been behind the scenes issues. This is a societal issue. To, it's not me. No, no, no. I blame little <laughs> Esther. Esther, can whatever the <laughs> name is. <laughs> Miss Esther. Why don't you stand up and show everyone what you've done to young women I and want older to say women? I that I am a victim. No, 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 no. Oh, what? Are you going to blame your parents for this one? Yes, bitch? I am. I am a victim of m not being able to leave high school. And when something that I wore in high school comes back in style, I have to. I'm leaving the show. <laughs> I'm done. This is my last episode. I have to. Yes, they're low rise. Do you see the brand? Are they Van Dutch? You stupid bitch. <laughs> you not, like, make your ass look good. That's the, the pants fault, not mine. I mean, <laughs> I was watching Jennifer's body and I was thinking like we did, we sacrificed the ass for, for the low, low rise. rise. Yeah. I'm not, look, I'm wearing this outfit you look today good. and I'm on a workout plan. I'm doing good, but. Annie, you're hot. No, no, no. I'm, listen. I got no problems there. I'm very into myself. <laughs> there's a there's a, a pooch situation. If I were to wear a low rise, it would be a bubbling over. Everyone has been through this. We all know that. But there are ways. Look, no, I No, but can I'm I just say hang over it? It's disrespectful. And I want you to look into the camera and apologize. I apologize that I can't leave my childhood behind. And then I'm also wearing Y2K era Tiffany's jewelry from high school. And last night- Is that I, actually from high school? Yes. And, oh, that's cute. I like that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and last night I was trying on my old Juicy Couture zip. Like I'm- You know I'm- mental illness. Okay. I'm Juicy's here our sponsorship back. with Juicy. They were asking me over the pandemic, but I couldn't. They were like, what are your sizes? I'm like, it's the, who asks people their sizes over a pandemic? I don't know what my <laughs> sizes are. You lost track. The hell are you talking about? I am going to be like, wearing those. I had sex too. with my high school boyfriend while wearing this. Thing. I resist your some of your looks because I don't want to be a poser off of you. But why? I will be. We always why? copy each other. We always copy why? each other. I thought that was our thing. No, it's your thing. You do me. <laughs> I don't do it back. No, I will be wearing those those burn victim arm things. Thank Esther, you. there's a juicy collab right now with Aries. So Just cute. FYI. That's really cute. I got some very cute stuff coming in the mail. I was talking, I don't think, did we talk about it on air where I've been waking up in the middle of the night and shopping? No, no, not on air, which I thought about this yesterday when I went home after talking to you because there's something to me that is so romantic and like the coolest thing ever to wake up in the middle of the night and do something. Oh. Guys, okay, we're done. We obviously talk about mental health here a lot. We're gonna talk about some fucking solutions, okay? <laughs> <laughs> your doctor's gonna fucking talk, okay? Oh, no. When you wake up in the middle of the night and you're spinning, you open, open an app, okay? Open a Revolve, open a Free People, open... Listen, you need a budget and an anxiety budget, okay? You put it to the side. <laughs> That's actually a really good idea. Buy yourself, and honestly, if you can't afford much, buy a pair of fucking socks, bitch. I don't care. Like, you buy one article, a thong, Or anything. add to cart. Fill a cart up. Sometimes I'll fill a cart up and do nothing with it. No. Clyde you must have hands. something. There has to be, a, there has to be a, a final product arriving to your house. I want to talk about what strange things we've done in the middle of the night. Because I have a list. What is on uh Oh, is it going to be about your crusty, crusty itchy pussy? <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Is it still crusty? It's not crusty. It's just hemorrhaging. Isn't that funny how mean it is to call someone's pussy crusty? I don't think that's mean. <laughs> you wouldn't, would you? No. I Wait, <laughs> can we? Okay, I want to talk about the hemorrhaging, but also before I forget. <laughs> she won't let you I know. came in late. No, listen, I want to talk about this because I'm also bleeding out. But before you do, can I wear one of your tracks? Yes, but can we explain why my track is like so busted? The Dyson. Yeah, can we? <laughs> the Dyson air stuff just dries Wait, everything out. Wait, how is the out. air wrapped? Is it I like returned it. What? It's trash for me. I think it works for other people. For my hair and for hair that doesn't have real moisture in it, it just sucks out the moisture. Okay. That's freshly washed. What are your... Are we, I was just going to say, you said that men should be the only ones that have to wash their hands. Yeah. We're bloody <laughs> diarrhea <laughs> monsters. Get a baby wipe. There's no... I can absolutely change a tampon and not need to wash my hands after. Pull Esther, I need you to wash your hands. <laughs> it's not about you and your comfort. It's about our comfort level around you. You stinky, nasty, 
tuna pussy. <laughs> Why are you? You've never smelled my vagina. Come smell it and tell me. I haven't anything. had to try, Esther. Yes, I have smelled your vagina. No, you haven't. From right here, I can smell it. Come here. Put your nose in there and you tell me what. Don't the- turn this into a it, fantasy it, for you. <laughs> You're asking for it. Thank you to our sponsor, ShipStation. In a landscape where free and fast shipping is the norm, it can be hard for smaller e-commerce businesses to compete. Keep yourself competitive with ShipStation. Use code TRASHTUESDAY today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com promo code TRASHTUESDAY for your 60-day free trial. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because... I wanted to nourish my body with all of the vitamins and minerals up front in the beginning of the day so that I wouldn't have to think about it for the rest of the day. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. That's athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. Check it out. Hi, Sluggies. I'm so excited to be on the road with the Welcome to Anywood tour. I can't wait to see you guys. Meeting you guys is so fun. I cannot wait to see all of you, each and every one of you, everywhere I go. You can see me this weekend in Washington, D.C. I'll then be in Seattle, Washington, March 10th and 11th. I'll be in Tampa, Florida, March 17th and 18th. Those two are going to sell out immediately. Um, I'm going to be in Toronto, Canada, April 21st and 22nd. I'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina, May 12th, 13th. I'll be in Salt Lake City in June. I'm going to be in Calgary at the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival with Andrew Schultz. In August, I have a lot more dates that are being added, so please make sure you check AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. And as always, on Thursday, you get a little extra dose of Annie each week <laughs> at Annie Wood. Um, it's so fun. I love it. It's my little baby, so come babysit with me. See you then. Now, Kalila, what Ask. are some things that- No, I didn't know you worked at the Prada store. <laughs> <laughs> That's so amazing. You got a job? That's so cool. I am serving up employee. I know it's a little bit of like stagehand or usher. It looks like you work at a mini golf course. I look like an usher with big Wait, games. isn't that how um, um, football footballer Ronaldo um, met his uh, wife? Was Georgina? I think no, she was working at the Prada store or something like and that. And they're so you, you always do think they're flirting with you. There was like, hi, Miss Annie. Yeah, she worked at the Haven't Gucci. Haven't been here for oh, a while. Oh, it's a Gucci store. Yeah, see, she was an employee. There's hope, Esther. For uh, what? Un futbolista. You're gonna find a woman. <laughs> at the Gucci <laughs> store. Also, Esther's probably a lesbian. I can't believe what she revealed last week. I've said that those things were not revealed. I was with the fans that you were gay baiting. Let's recap. Like, this whole time I was like, she's queer baiting, she's faking. Wait, what's the recap? What last the recap week? is she said she was like, when I was little, I was so worried I was gay. I became suicidal. Like, oh my so you're a lesbian? <laughs> so you are a lesbian. I'm not coming forward with a label. Oh, That's but her, my decision. Her fiance has cute, <laughs> a cute lob. Let's just say that. <gasps> I don't have a decision. I'm a creature. And of... then you were like, is it weird that I really was like attracted to this lesbian and then she transitioned into a man? Oh, you, that you're attracted to a woman and not a man? There's nothing <laughs> weird about that. There's literally nothing weird about that. I would like to know what Kalila does in the middle of the night when she wakes up. <laughs> when she gushes blood. Well, um, you guys know this. I one time, well, a couple of things. The first time I ever had anal was in the middle of the night wake up. Um, Were you involved? Or did you consent? Um, there was ambient involved. It was ambient consent. But you squished <laughs> the ass. You pushed the ass up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was on you Ambien informed? and I, in the middle of the night, like you're, you feel a little witchy. You're like, yes. I want to do something different. And so at that time it was anal. Other things I've done since, um, I woke up a friend, a platonic friend and had sex with him. Wait, I like that you said witchy because it is, that is very like um, Wiccan. Like I feel like the Wiccan girls were always given their butt. Oh, or giving the <laughs> out. Don't you feel like the Wiccan girls were always like, come here. I thought that was Get Catholic my- girls. Because they can't do vagina. Any I thought it was weird Muslim? Religious thing, I think. What? Yeah. I, oh. Yeah. Okay. Let's not go there. <laughs> but you were saying, sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> My thing. Um, yeah, so like it's just a witchy hour and you do things you wouldn't normally do when the sun Hook is up. Hook up with your guy friend that you're in bed with. And he didn't say no. And then I cried afterwards when Why? I came to my I've senses. And I was sort of in like this like lucid dream. I was really horny. He just, I knocked on his room and I was like, 
just started making out with him and then we had sex. He just let it happen. And then I went back in the room and then I started crying. And then the next day I cried to him. I said, I don't know what that was. Like that'll never happen. Oh, again. poor guy. He'd and been waiting for <laughs> years. He had been waiting his whole life to get that. He was a roommate. Much. It was really not good on me. Maybe yeah. we should you know, have a sleepover. <laughs> wait, you know what I was thinking? I was just talking to Bonnie McFarland about this today because I ran into two of my exes last night and I was like- what? At the same time? Yes. Lucky and it's girl. just like, but the thing is, it's like, and all good. Um, <laughs> but like, the reason you shouldn't fuck comics is not because of what happens during the relationship. It's just that you have to see someone you used to fuck every day. That is high risk. It's not about, because I always thought it was like, you don't want like the reputation of being like a girl who dates comics and they're like, you know, they always say they write your jokes for you and stuff, even though I'm not going to name any names, but a lot of their punchlines. Um, that is true. I've always dated people that were just not a part of my work circle or so out of yeah. it. So like when it's over, it's over. I probably will never run into any of them again. Why am I like, I love that I run into my exes at work. You're sick. Like I love, it's such a pleasant surprise to be like, oh, there's so-and-so. You like, could easily be like a Jeffrey Dahmer. Like you, <laughs> easily, you could so easily be someone that like chops people up and just le keeps their body parts. You, that Yes. If you were big enough to like roll a barrel <laughs> i think you would be like a like a chunk her, of body murder we'll give her a couple more weeks with body by cassandra and, and she might be able to roll a barrel it's yoga by cassandra I know, it's yoga. Like, once once a and, month is and it? it won't be a few weeks it will be a little bit longer than that because we do go <laughs> once a week but i it's funny you say that annie you're not totally wrong because i have this thing with dave where often i'll say like my end goal for our relationship is to have him in a jar and just like <laughs> Have him in a jar. Well, he has arthritis. I feel like he could fit in. It's <laughs> <laughs> could like no, yeah, the day is coming. That is kind of sweet. Um, I'm doing my makeup. If there are body parts that you would want to keep as uh, for everything in a jar, but you can have the whole body, like what parts would you keep? Of a guy? Of a guy, of an ex. Let's say, okay, let's say we lived in a I world. Them. I don't hate them, I don't hate them. <laughs> let's say we lived in a world where if you broke up with someone, you'd have to give a certain body part away. Of your own? You have to. If you are in a committed relationship and you, let's say you go Facebook or Instagram official, if that relationship ends, you are obligated by law to give one body it's part away. getting told. Who chooses? I'm, I need my parts. Um, He chooses. No, you, you can choose. Or no, yeah, the other partner chooses. But it cannot be the genitalia because obviously they'd have to carry that on into the next relationship. I'm trying to be nice to people and let them live. I'm taking toes, fingers. Oh, that's thoughtful. Fingers. An ear. Tongue. <laughs> for the artists i love art I love maybe painters. we swap tongues mm, you know what that's a good body part too i don't want your little ass tongue like what would you actually want <laughs> besides the, lips and tongue right does the um like what are no offense like what are dave's eyes gonna do in my next <laughs> season of life <laughs> for me well, this is actually is, interesting you brought up the eyes because I did pay for Todd's LASIK, so I do feel an owner. <laughs> I'm like, do you, have you ever bought the ability of like sight for someone? Like, do you know how powerful I feel? Wait, that's so cool. I want to do that. I bought him vision. Imagine if he were to ever fuck over. I put it on my over. American Express. Oh my Imagine God. if he were to ever do anything to be like, I his eyes out. No, you you almost have the right to. <laughs> you could like, I, give them back. I'm like, what porn are you watching? I now have control over that. <laughs> yeah, you gave him sight, Annie. I gave him sight. That honestly, I'm a I'm a we're on to something. Mm -hmm. I like this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing they, the the people have asked for a makeup list. <laughs> hey, this is a get ready with me. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, get yeah. ready with me episode. Sorry, Thanks. guys. You want me on time or not? You got to make some choices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a busy ADD bitch. Okay. <laughs> I almost feel like you're better when you're uh, in this makeup. Well, mode. also here's the thing, you guys <laughs> you can't do it. If you want You'll me, never to, get no, to but the here's makeup. the thing. If you guys want me on time, that means they have to wait. Like I'm not like sometimes <laughs> these bitches are like you're never gonna know. Okay, I know what I am, so I go. I give full permission for people to start without me. Okay, so no one is taking any body parts from their exes. No, I hate the question to be honest. <laughs> okay, Let's no, but what are you bushy, taking? Bloody pushy, pussy. My bloody pushy. pushy. <laughs> it's very pushy. She fucking <laughs> raped her fucking roommate. <laughs> then told him it was a mistake. <laughs> she slept, raped him. <laughs> what really surprised me about that is that he did not even resist. A little bit, not. Why does that surprise you? Need that mirrors, <laughs> bitch. You got like a fucking playhouse mirror that makes you look fat. 
That was it, it was kind of hot though. He was like half asleep too and he just like went right. with it. Yes, all great. I can think about is all the men I've had sleepovers with and shared beds with in my life and this has just never come close to happening. No roommate, no no man has ever in the middle of the night made a move on me. It's so funny that you're like Randy's size. Like you're like the size of my own dog in my bed with me if you're there. Like I wouldn't even think do you sleep at the foot of the bed? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you sleep? Are you you sleep I think? only know you as like a couch sleeper. I've never walked in and seen you sleeping in your. Are you a side sleeper? Uh, Are stomach? you like an inside spoon? Or... <laughs> You're a stomach uh... sleeper. Are you separate? I... Are you touching during sleep? Are you in the no, same No, we can't touch because Dave wears his mask. You can Dude, touch. You can still fucking touch me. Yeah. No. Did you give him sleep apnea? <laughs> you just started shoving things up his nose at night. He's like, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> um, You guys don't touch at all? Not like at sleep. It yeah, Bobby had a weird thing about that. It's like even if my toe would like graze up against him, he would like I would move away him. and it would really hurt my feelings. So <laughs> now because I'm so programmed to not touch a partner during sleep Aww. that like l like the last person that I had like a sleepover with, a boy, Sorry, um, Mr. <laughs> I would I would be really careful not to like touch any of his like his feet or anything he's like what's what's going on and if i would by accident i would pull away he's like what is that i was like oh i think i thought you were gonna yell at me for maybe i sleep i have a controversial opinion about threesomes that i would like to share and get okay. here i have been thinking and i look i'm a very open person i i think everything in life is fluid i think like whatever, but I actually believe that sex should only be between two people at a time. <laughs> I don't think threesomes make any sense. I've never had one. Everyone I know seems to have had one. I feel like it's so complicated. Like someone's gonna feel left out. I, I just, I don't think they should exist. As a pillow princess, you should really lean into that. <laughs> <laughs> you lay back, you go, you do that. You just have to be the one that's doing nothing. Oh, I didn't think You have to be the one that's that. being serviced. <laughs> I. I will say this, the first time you get into a threesome with someone, it's the same way, like, like it's as if you're for hooking up with just even one person for the very first time. You bang teeth, things are mm -hmm. awkward, things are not like choreographed well. You don't know how the other moves, you don't know how the other kisses. It's, it's just like, is banging teeth like weird? <laughs> I've never not banged I'm teeth. Like, that I know, okay, banging teeth. I, I've never had a successful threesome until I did it Every day. Every day. <laughs> you domesticated it. Yeah, like and and like the first time it happened, it was like maybe in theory it was hot. That that's why I was turned on, but it didn't become like a well oiled machine until we did it over and over and over again. Okay. And and then it was fun. And then it's like, oh, this is starting to get really creative and who was the well and who was the oil? <laughs> As both. I can't. <laughs> um not to shift gears in a really big way, but I've been doing some thinking and I want to pose a question and get your guys' opinion on this. Should you get buccal fat removal? No, bitch. I almost got that in my 20s. I'm glad. That's I oh, my so God. Great. If you did that, I know. you would actually like your age would be sad. I was so insecure about my cheeks forever in my 20s. Like, I just hate them so much. I, Me and Jenna would, like, look up the surgery and talk about it and send pictures. I, I, never, I didn't know it existed back then. Because we have a friend that got it done. Oh, you that's do? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A girl you don't know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know her, but it's a it's a friend, and and maybe she loves it, maybe she doesn't. I just think that as Your face I always, things. I was always told, and it was always reinforced that like my big cheeks were a great thing, and that I I never thought because I have obviously my mom has like massive. She's very cheeky. Yeah. My whole family's big on the cheeks, and I remember, I always knew one day that it would. It's like you just look at it and you're like, oh, this, this is fat. This is fat on my face. Yeah. Like this looks youthful. Like why would I ever try to that take was, that out? That was ultimately why I didn't do it because I was like, I think I will regret it later. I'm just going to stick this out and I'm glad I did. But I totally, you know, a big part of it was like one of my first few dates with Dave. He was like, oh, I saw this video you made where you talked about things you don't like about yourself and you <laughs> mentioned your... Did you send it to the... Does that what you do on dates? You're like, <laughs> look at this first. <laughs> and he was like, you mentioned your cheeks and then he... I'll like never forget the moment where he was like, I think your cheeks are beautiful. And I was like, Ugh! like 
because I've never felt that way about them. And so now I'm like, okay, anything works. It's such like, if you think it's such a baby thing to be like upset about, like we, it's like insecurities of when we're so little, you know? Yeah. Like I remember when I was really little looking down and being like, my thighs are fat. And I I was always friends with grownups, obviously as a kid, weirdly. (laughs) And my like 30 year old friend was like, you think your thighs are fat? Like you're nine. <laughs> you know, it's like you just like sure. it's like little things that you like. No, I, it's yeah. like baby stuff that stays in your head forever. Which the the main takeaway should be that like no matter what you're insecure about, someone else will like it. So just fucking pretend that it's. Oh, I saw this thing on TikTok that was like that. This girl's therapist said, "Pretend that exactly who you are and what you look like is the standard of beauty." What if? You are the standard of beauty. I am. It's so <laughs> sad. You have to pretend. That's not fair. You are. <laughs> so pretty. Fuck. <laughs> Blonde, blue-eyed bitch. <gasps> but it does help. I call- Hi, Hitler. <laughs> hey. Oh, wait. That transitions to my next topic. Yeah. Oh, boy. What happened to you? <laughs> no, no, no. What happened on... Now we're going to the segment called Trash Jews Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Esther, Wait, what please happened? Please don't make me laugh so hard. I will bleed into this what yellow couch. What happened to our little Jewess? I have a question for you that you're going to be surprised by. It's more of a debate to consider. Ooh, is it about semi-glutides? What's that? <laughs> also, you... <laughs> so crazy to just say that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Yes, we were talking about semi-glutides. No, like <laughs> Ozempic. Oh, I wish I uh, talk Ozempic about is, guys, everyone's going to be dead in a month. <laughs> Wait, really? Why? Everyone's going to be dead in a month. <laughs> from the bird flu or from Ozempic? Ozempic. <laughs> Who is, why are we, and by the way, why are there just like fat men missing legs that can't get Ozempic? <laughs> What's going on? Well, it's because it is like, you, it's. It's a privilege thing to be able to get Ozempic. There are a lot of people uh, that actually need it who aren't 100%. getting it. Because, you know, I have a weird tea. Mindy Kalings are Is it a weird tea? Hoarding it. I was I, I fucking have been seeing commercials for Ozempic. Yeah. So I don't feel anyone who's taking it that isn't supposed to be, well then why is it being advertised to the average American? Like that's I'm not mad at the Or drug. diabetes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel, <laughs> dude, you know what? I'm not stupid. I no, I'm not. It's not. If you're if a doctor will give it to you, it's not your fault. But it is like you're like, I think it'd be dropping dead. You I really think, think Lisa Marie was on opiates in her thing in her autopsy. It was like opiates and Ozempic. It was. If you're losing 25 pounds in two weeks, that's bad for no, you. No, that's not good. And it's not good for your face. either. But do your thing. Uh, I don't. I have friends that are on it. I don't judge it. (laughs) I don't judge it, but I definitely would be personally scared. And I think people should like do that. I think it has weird like interactions with things and stuff. Look, I'm just going to do some sit ups. Do you know what I mean? Or not? (laughs) Well, what you're the nurse. What's your take? I just don't like how there is like it's disproportionate um, in its distribution right now, where it's like people that actually need it. That's everything in our society. Right, right. But but also, it's not just like a supplement, it's like a fucking, it's a shot. That it's crazy. But then I would say the same argument about filler, about like anything that we're people just do and that there's no like historical research. And now people are having trouble dissolving it's all a little the filler. Different, though, Problems after. are like hap- this is like you're, going you're, into your yeah, blood. You're you're dealing with something systemic. When you're talking about like cosmetic stuff that's I mean, of course there are um side effects, like serious side effects that can happen. You can get an occlusion when you um have a filler, you can cause blindness. Those are the really, really rare side effects. Right, like your filler can move. Ooh, yeah, it can. For Botox, but Remember, yeah, our friends, those yeah. are still I saw her recently. Those are still relatively. Um, I, I don't know. It's like a small, okay, smaller and rarer side effects, and something that happens when you have like systemic body changes that affect all of your organs. If you're losing 25 pounds in a month, and I don't know, people will always stand by it because it is obviously a very effective drug. I'm just curious to see how this is all going to pan out like long term. What are your also, for people who don't need it who are using it? But also isn't it like isn't it like a weight suppress or a appetite suppressant which that I've never been hungry. When I'm eating, <laughs> when I'm yeah. gaining weight it's not because I'm satiating hunger. That's the same. I always eat for taste. I don't yes. eat for hunger. So it's like I'm not like if I'm if I'm becoming obese it's not because I'm like Hung, I'm like, oh, it's lunchtime. Let's eat. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I'd be the bitch that, that eats through it, probably. I but think I just... 
not to like seems shady and scary i definitely am like oh i think my sister should go on ozempic no there are a lot of people that could probably benefit from bleep it no don't bleep it (laughs) but that's what i'm saying is i do think for people who struggle with their weight i'm like why can't they but what do you think is going to go wrong with it um i mean i just like annie said like there is you have girls who are already of a normal BMI, right, by whatever standard. And these are girls who are generally healthy, but who are looking at the waif skinny yeah, trend. That's fucked up. Who are like, oh, no, I want to do that. So now they're taking a medication to fit a trend. And I just can't see. I, 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 I'm sorry, like that that seems like only an insane negative outcome can yeah, come from that. You're like right. You are, and also, then if you get off of it, yeah, it's you're like, not you're also you not be, treating like, the root cause of why yeah. you're imagine all the people with already with eating disorders now. Yeah. Now they have this magic thing that they can take without having to purge, without having to deal with any of the um hiding or any of that. Now they can just boop, that's it. I'm gonna be waif thin. And I don't know. It's just I think I think they'll probably find that like losing weight that fast is pretty hard on the heart and yeah, it's gonna hurt your things. organs or something. It's got to. Yeah. It's got to. No, you guys are right. I'll go. I'll leave. <laughs> no, can I get to my real? I yes, have a real yes. serious question. And I want serious answers. Okay. I don't believe you. This better be serious. I'm gonna fucking punch you if it's not serious. Okay. And I want you to really think about it. Should the world know who Anne Frank is? Oh, it is trash juice day. <laughs> <laughs> because think about it. If you, are you about to say she lost? Are you if you're a little girl, do you want the whole world to read your diary? My dad got me Kurt Cobain's diary for Christmas one year, mm-hmm. and I was so uncomfortable. I was like, I don't want to read this. It's like someone's diary. I think that it's amazing, and obviously we've learned so much, and like it's really cool, and it's been good for the world. But as a once as someone who was once a small jewish girl with a diary i don't want people to read that or know about it the dairy of anne frank right here <laughs> um esther what what was on there um that you i never read it what, i didn't a, read it either would I don't you do want so. how about the real questions would you want the world to read to know your diary and after your, your if you guys want to read my di- let me just give you a little hint of what my diary is okay it goes dear diary today i woke up feeling and then I completely forget I'm writing. And then on my day I go. Then it's it's a few more lines. It's picked up in a different pen and it says, buy tampons. And then it goes, and then it's a couple more lines in a different pen and it goes, um, dad's dick, question mark. I want to work on a bit. It's all put together. There's nothing. Well, the saddest thing is if you actually did read my diary from elementary school, it would be like, my weight and what I ate, which is really, that's so sad. Oh, and I how have, hot that girl was that sat near you? I have an <laughs> announcement to make. <laughs> I have an announcement to make. And what? Esther, we can take this out if this is too personal for you. Yeah, but I like know, um, Annie, you think, it, you know, we've we've made fun of me on this show because I wanted to be a poet once upon a time. And uh-huh. I really, really thought that that's where my life was going to take uh-huh. me. Um, I just found out that little Esther here also had some poetic aspirations once upon a time. Okay, I have to say that I am a hypocrite. And when I was I was projecting, when I made fun of Kalila's poems, because my sister recently sent me a poem that I wrote after my dog died. And it was it was a poem and I wrote it. And I want to admit something though. Was when it, I first read it, when I first read it, I thought it was about a boy until one line when you said, I'm going to miss you running across the lawn. <laughs> I, up until that point, until the very end, I was like, oh my God, this is about her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> they're, they're, they don't miss her running across their lawn. <laughs> <laughs> People, can, are, are we allowed to read it? Sure. Oh my God, read me this piece of shit. I can't wait to hear this. It needs emotional. to be serious. The way you guys it's made me read my dog, poem. Though. Okay. Yeah, but hers was about a dog. Yours was just like emo emotions. But this is just, e- you know what? Ugh, this is so embarrassing. But whatever, who cares? Okay. Yeah, so I'm locked I, in. I, I have a poem, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's also really long. <laughs> Oh, it's I. This is so. I want, I'm so cringy. I need it. I, I need, need support. It. Give me a pep talk, Esther. You already suck. You can't 
<laughs> Nothing can get worse from this. Okay. You're dressed like you work at a fucking store. <laughs> Waiting for Ronaldo. <laughs> okay. Also, I was sent via email from my AOL screen name, Bella Dancer G. Um, oh, okay. that's so PC compared to what I thought your email. I had some other ones that were like. Mine was Anne Frank fan 69 Was <laughs> it really? I have that Yahoo email address. Lucky girl. Mine was pop that pussy. It <laughs> was, it was. Those are legal to have the Yeah, words? and then my second was tickleme702 at gmail.com. <laughs> and they said she asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm just gonna make it fast. I really can't explain the sadness that I feel. It's hard to think a day will come when all this pain might heal. Few memories exist in my mind where you do not appear, making it hard to believe you are no longer here. Throughout my childhood, you were the only one always there. You listened to my secrets when no one else would care. Oh my God, this is so The dog sad. did not care. He killed himself. He jumped in front of a fucking car. He's like, I don't want to hear these bunch of secrets. <laughs> and never can I remember us having a single fight. You even reassured my safety every single night. Because of your existence, I never felt alone. Looking back at our lives together, I can't believe how much we've grown. Whenever you ran away, I'll, I'd always think I'd die for him. Throwing myself in front of, of cars to assure you'd safely get back in. Oh, you have that in common with him. <laughs> Up until this point, I still thought it was about a boy. By the way. I love that he ran away. By the way, your dog I was, was like, like, "Get me away from this girl." Dusty She's was a runner. Me. Were you like, um, were you like, like, what's the Almira? Girl? Yeah, were you like, sque I yeah. squeeze you? Oh, I yeah. love you. I was. Yeah, he. I don't think he liked Come me. Come here, Mister Gazelli. That girl. <laughs> um. Uh. The weirdest part in all this is that there is no going back. Who else will get up in the middle of the night to join me as I snack? Ooh, middle of the night. <laughs> Everything makes sense. Walking in the house without you there to greet me will forever be so painful that I almost guarantee. I miss you tons. It hasn't been even one full day. I don't know how I'll live going on this way. And every time I think, wow, he's really gone. I wish I could take you for a walk or watch you race across our lawn. I'll always look back fondly and probably shed a tear because it seems impossible that you will not be here. This is heartbreaking. I know. I really love Dusty. This is like also so adds up to everything from the therapy episodes. Like I had no one but Dusty. Uh-oh. My bully is looking you at me. You had everyone. Just <laughs> lean into the fact that your parents are alive and love you. Esther, they're going to be dead. Okay? We have to forgive love. I do forgive and I do love, but... Look at this, this is like when I called my dad. Listen, when I called my dad, Esther, was that like, was beautiful. Thank you. When I called my dad and I was like, I think I'm dyslexic. He was like, Annie, what are we doing at this point? <laughs> it's like, let them just. You're lucky. Look at the good. The good. No, you're I'm fine. looking at the good, but I actually, it's it is. Was good. this when your dad was at the casino? I'll give you that. Was this <laughs> casino time period? Wait, how did the Dusty um, pass of old age? Yeah, he was. He died when I went away for freshman. Oh yeah, I was older than that than I than you might think when I wrote that poem. I was nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> she was okay. already doing comedy. So Dusty, she was dating Tony. <laughs> I would be in two years. Oh my god, I was two years from being a comedian dating Tony. <laughs> That's so dark. I was a child. Don't flip that. <laughs> no, you were too grown to do the poem. Oh. Not too young to date a person. <laughs> Wait, so um, I was a child. <laughs> Wait, so how did Dusty pass? He had Cushion's disease. Oh, And I were you around when, to I say goodbye? I came back to say goodbye, yeah. And then my Pumpkin dad took us all to Mangiano's and we each got to get our own dessert for the first time the night that putting your away. Putting a pet down is quite possibly uh, a wound that never heals. I well, think. do you watch? Like, do you go in and watch? I watch. No, yeah, my, my last dog, Sprout, I went in and I watched Oh, when it. he didn't sprout, did he? I cannot have this. Um, this conversation is horrible hell you have to have it but i think there's something that um ram das says about death that like really really rings true for me and it's like there is no like like death is like as true as life gets like there is no bigger truth than watching someone transition like nothing is more pure nothing is more i watched my father take his last breath i watched um sprout take her last breath and it allows me to recognize that um all the love that i feel that 
And it allows me to kind of know that the grief that I'm feeling is really just love with like no place to go. And I lean into it. I'm like, okay, I don't want this wound to heal. This is a love that will never go away. Yeah. So this is a wound I'm okay not healing. They have, there's this poem, this line from a poem, this girl that's like similar to that where she's like, Every um, time you run across my lawn. <laughs> it's this wonderful poet. Um, very, a little older than you'd think. Uh, <laughs> She said, roses are red, violets are blue. I miss you. Where are you? <laughs> I miss Bravo. picking up your poo. Um, yeah, but it's like grief is just um, love in a heavy coat. Isn't that cute? Yeah. I don't know. Sorry, girl. I don't know what your name is, but it's a cute poem. Thank you. Yeah. But I think that um, it's different for everybody, but I... I find relief knowing I'm there till the bitter end. And sometimes... Hmm, it, I like that. Yeah. And and I imagine it would have been harder for me to not have been there when my father died. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like if it was like sudden and I didn't have time to come home, yeah. but it made it a lot easier for me to know that, okay, like I was here and like, we're good. I, I see how, I see how we went. Who else was there? Uh, my mom and my sister and my best friend. And it was really weird because my best friend was like, she didn't, had never seen anyone in that state before, even really sick. And we were teenagers. And my dad had like a gangrenous foot because there was no more like blood perfusing mm. to his legs. And so his toes were like black, basically. And she had this weird coping mechanism. Like we were cry laughing, like when we left yeah, his room. Totally, it's like yeah. very cathartic because she, as, as his, you can see his like things, all his machines start to kind of, you know, go out. She was like just playing with his black toe. Like what? That, that was her way of coping. She was just kind of like hyper focused like, on the toe. Like, like, whoa. <laughs> and yeah, it was like really strange. And then I remember like that image of her, like it's just so like comical to me. And such like I don't know, like I, I think about it fondly. Like it was sad, but also fucking funny because I was watching my best friend like unable to deal with a situation and just like choosing a toe to kind of like pet. I just love it. it. I, I think I actually love that you have that funny, silly thing that's a part of that memory. Like I, I think that is like how we all cope. I know we talk about this a lot, but it's like I, the the big laugh that Dave and I shared at my grandfather's funeral is like one of the best memories of our relationship. It's like my aunt gave this speech that was nonsensical and like so long and fucking stupid. Yeah, that's right. I'm saying it on camera. I don't care anymore. <laughs> and after, but after she gets down from the pew or whatever, she just gave this speech about her father who passed away. My, she, walks past my grandma and in the nastiest tone my grandma just looks at her and goes way too much <laughs> <laughs> and like me and dave just lost our shit it was so funny and like obviously my aunt said too much but it's like grandma like her dad died like fucking let her you know, <laughs> like you don't have to be a bitch at the end i don't know it was it was, it was hilarious I think you need those moments of levity. My dad's funeral, there was a woman, um, Sister Cleo, who sang Amazing Grace, and she saw, sang it so often. Did she read your tarot cards, too? <laughs> <laughs> um, but she sang off-key the whole time. And, you know, like when you're in a classroom with someone and you're trying to, like, not laugh and it only gets worse and it, the laugh becomes yeah. bigger, you have to excuse yourself out the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's basically my sister and I, like... It, Those there's really a, are the best fucking moments. I know. They're so hard not to <laughs> You laugh. just, like, shove your, like, sleeve in your mouth, like, trying to... <laughs> yeah. When that happened to me in college, it was funny. Like, you're very grown to be having this happen. I'm like, I cannot wow. stop laughing. Okay. Look, we had merch once. <laughs> we had merch for three days. And we will have merch again. And yeah. we will have merch again. And we're using ShipStation. In a landscape where free and fast shipping is the norm, it can be hard for smaller e-commerce businesses to compete. Keep yourself competitive with ShipStation. ShipStation makes it easy to grow your business by handling your orders from every marketplace in one dashboard. ShipStation effortlessly integrates everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. I'll say I feel like everyone nowadays like has a small business and as some as all of us who have like gone through that using ShipStation just makes it so much more simple. 
it's like cleaner and Streamlined. there's so many little things that you have to take into consideration when you're like shipping and doing this kind of stuff that ship station just is it makes it very easy i can't even ship myself here on time <laughs> do you and think i can ship my articles of my pieces of business to you guys. <laughs> and you can manage every order from one simple dashboard, automate routine shipping tasks, print shipping labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment and automate delivery notifications. And my favorite part is that with the best discounts in the industry, you will never worry about overpaying for shipping. Get up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, use our promo code to try ShipStation for free two months. Keep growing your business all year long with ShipStation. Use promo code Trash Tuesday today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code Trash Tuesday. Annie, how do you take your AG1? Oh, I got one of those little shaker things. I put it in my water, I shake it up, and I chuggity chug, 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 baby. And it's so mild tasting. Yeah. You can add it to your smoothie. It doesn't overpower um, really the taste good. of your smoothie. I like to add a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar, and I use my little matcha Ooh, stir, put a little bit of ice, and it is so good, you guys. Mm. You know I was a chugger in college. I can't chug much. I like to. I used to chug Jaeger, now I chug Athletic Greens. And it's a really like fun way to start my day. I feel more energized. I feel I'm doing something really Really nice for myself. I have to say, I do feel like amongst all the successful people I know, Athletic Greens is like the thing that they all have in common. Like successful people take AG1. Not like ignoring you when you try to talk to them. Well, that's also there. <laughs> that's second on the list. Like as a person that can be, you know, lean more towards disorganized lifestyle, AG1 makes it so simple. Like all the nutrition nutrients that I'm looking for are in one place, one powder, all in one fell swoop, not having to like mismatch. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't have time to be like, how many milligrams of this thing? How many of this? How many pills of this? It's like enough. And you guys, it's just one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. And every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients of the highest quality that give us major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking hair, skin, and nails. And if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to go to athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. That's athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. Check it out. Yeah, this isn't a funeral, obviously, but my... This my, podcast? Oh, it could be if you keep up your behavior. <laughs> If you keep wearing low rise pants, you fucking bitch. I'm out, by the way. Mark my words. If she wears these again, we're done. This is not fair. You you need to be mad at trend cycles, not me. I'm a victim of the trend You're cycle. You're basic. That I know. <laughs> I want to be basic. That's not a bad thing. Dr. Drew said simple and safe. You aren't, there's nothing safe about you. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents aren't safe. You're finding new things they abused you with. <laughs> no one's safe around Esther. <laughs> She's got to justify her. That sounds like the tagline to a horror movie. No. <laughs> and it is a real Esther in that movie. You, the, you look like the girl, by the way, the orphan. Oh, I know. Um, okay, so my my brother, okay, so when my brother got married, my twin brother, my mom was in charge of the rehearsal dinner. My mom had just had a high school reunion with her girlfriends from her boarding school where her one of her friends was like a folk singer with her husband and they did like silly songs. Now, if you're meeting up with your girlfriends from high school and they're singing, it's funny, right? It's uh -huh. like, okay, silly, funny, like sex innuendos and these songs, whatever. My mom hires her to be the musical talent <laughs> of my, and my brother's used to my mom's shit, okay? My sister-in-law, Dana, is a, is she's a real regular beautiful person that's used to regular normal life okay my mom love those people it's like you, wrong family bitch um we love you dana you make us a little normal but so she so my mom hires this woman and it's like her it's in a restaurant first of all where they're like can we turn the music down in the whole restaurant and the restaurant's like no <laughs> so they're like through like there's like you know like third eye blind is playing in the background and they're like have a little keyboard and they're singing like weird, like the fish go upstream. They have like movements <laughs> and stuff. Like it's just so cringe, so ridiculous, so embarrassing. Like everything's a sex joke. It's like these old people singing this to just like my sister-in-law's family and my family. And I think about it and it's like, if my mom had gotten like a band that ruled, 
we wouldn't even think about it, right? <laughs> it's like we wouldn't even remember this thing. Now it's fucking amazing. Yeah. But it's like, I guess like, so like you do want someone to talk shit at a funeral. You do want someone, yes. you know what yes. I mean? Like you, you do want, want things to go wrong. Someone to wiggle your dad's dying toe or whatever. I'll, I'll tell you, like we never remember perfect wed weddings, perfect birthdays. We always remember the ones where shit went down. I need shit to go down. Not maybe like traumatic shit, but some shit to go yeah. down. Another like favorite, most imprinted Christmas memory was the year I got an iPod video and I immediately uploaded the Pam and Tommy porn on it. Sorry, I know that's wrong of me, but that was what I did first. And then I was all sides, guys. And then I was looking at it and from across the room, my mom shouts, whose dick is that? <laughs> <laughs> and like that was a quote. So she was present? <laughs> And paying well, attention on Christmas. <laughs> um, so yeah, whose dick is that? Was a quote for a long yeah. time with me and my sister. I never saw that tape. Really? Well, you're. Well, I didn't person. have a computer or internet. <laughs> yeah, come on over. <laughs> my dad was always watching all of the celeb porns. My dad really? was on first. Yeah. Well, my brothers would like go like buy porn from people like down the street and. So when they caught my brothers buying porn, my mom just had my dad get Playboy and then all of the kids could just take it. Oh, yeah, it yeah, yeah. So that they wouldn't like spend their money. Banana bread. Thank, Thank you. you, Sam. Sorry I was so surprised by you last time. I didn't <laughs> see you in the corner. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, this is why I cannot be dating, by the way. Can I give you an example of why I could possibly like really chase a boy away if I were to... Yes, please. So... Um, I was, I was with a boy and, um, my period was right around the corners. So I was feeling extra emotional. You know how it is where you're just all of a sudden unearthing all of your childhood core wounds. And I said two things that I, I fully regret now that my estrogen is back on the rise. I said two things and with full tears in my eyes, cause I asked them, I was like, do you like crows and ravens? And he was like, yeah, like. I like them. They're like cool birds. And then with full tears in my eyes, I was like, because I think there is a crow inside me <laughs> crying. And I had to explain to him like my connection to Corvids, why oh, I think. <laughs> I do ayahuasca. There's nothing weird about anything. I know. I'm said. like literally. <laughs> yes, there is on. a crow inside you, bitch. I'm <laughs> so turned on by that. I'm like, tell me more. Like, I love this. about. And you. then the next day, even now closer to my period. I tell him a story about how I used to crack rocks as a child looking for certain crystals. And I spent six months um, before my sister's birthday, like um, collecting what I thought was the most precious rocks that I had ever cracked. And I put them in a really fancy box. And on her birthday, um, she opened that gift last. And all of my mom and my aunts and everyone, they were like, what is that? And Kawina was like, oh, Kalila cracked rocks for me. And she gave me her most like precious crystals. And they all laughed. And they were You're like, a fucking what? entrepreneur. They were like rocks and they all like cackled. And I remember feeling so humiliated and and um and feeling like I just spent six months like Where are they not? collecting these rocks. And my sister chased me upstairs. She's like, I love them, I love them, I swear. And I was really embarrassed because I was only nine. And I told this story to the boy again with full tears in my eyes. And I was like, I used to crack rocks. <laughs> Really crazy, like precious rocks. And I I honestly think As he, long as you didn't smoke them, bitch. I, <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's I like, know people that cracked rocks. Am I allowed to be this vulnerable this early on in yes. a thing? Because oh, I think yeah. I'm just gonna people are gonna think I'm insane. Don't you remember right. that headline from a few months ago? It was like the clingy girls were the right ones. It's like if you We know someone who didn't forget that one. <laughs> Did you did you hang it up like it was about you? <laughs> you framed it. Be yourself. Like yeah, let your yourself. that's so interesting what you just said. And also that's such a core wound that you carry. And it's so good to like let it out. And I'm glad you shared it with us because like I have things like that too, where I remember when I this is why I don't know how to ride a bike, because one of the times where I was being taught, like a <laughs> what? <laughs> what? A car full of wine. You don't even know what I'm going to say. Is it a car full of me laughing at you? <laughs> just several me. I'm in every seat laughing at you. It was a car <laughs> full of cool guys and they looked at me and they laughed and then I was like, I can't, I'm not doing this. I'm never Where are my sunglasses? I'm a cool guy laughing at you. <laughs> oh. 
Oh God, that is so funny. So Kyla, I just think we have so much in common and like we should really like- Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Esther. Be yourself always. Be Always be the crow that you have in you. Thank you. Yes. I want to say one more thing about crows. <laughs> <laughs> who is this old and can't ride a bike <laughs> you're nothing you're nothing thank you <laughs> but i watched this I or i listened to this whole i don't know if it was a hidden brain but it was uh, one of the npr ones about a girl who just like in her 30s 30s decided to join a community of people who don't know how to ride bikes and they all get together and they learn <laughs> i think you should do that so there's no humiliation of doing it alone no i think you should do it on here and we should humiliate <laughs> or or i think humiliation is what she likes a little bit i think i'm not humiliated anymore it's i'm scared okay one more idea i don't want to get hurt one more idea how about I we can't all we won't get hurt <laughs> we pick a day of the week we wake up at three in the morning and we teach esther how to ride a bike i mean why we're gonna give it three is crazy. in the middle of the night but I also like <laughs> If you make one more plan with me, bitch, that you don't follow through on, I'll fucking scalp you. I will be wearing your hair. I said yes. Episode. I wasn't the one who said no to steak dinner. I said yes, whenever. What are your sides? A twice baked potato would be okay. my first choice. Gummy bears, <laughs> jelly beans. <laughs> <gasps> what what sides would you be going for? Definitely, um, I don't before like spinach. spinach caused um, extreme, you know, GI pain for me. It used to be like cream spinach. Oh, that's not. Um, mm. Or I love from Boston this. Market. Yes. Oh my, my god. god, that feels like a boyfriend from middle school. <laughs> like I'm yes. like oh. So I, you know, my one of my biggest. Even my boyfriend from middle school worked at Boston Market. I think maybe that's. I why love I mean. Boston. Very <laughs> nostalgic for me. It's one of the first yeah. American Wait. things I really enjoy. Guys, the fucking um the ice skating rink, Old York Road ice skating rink that I used to like make out with boys at closed down. That's painful. <laughs> where are the kids fingering each other now? They found another cut for sure. Yeah, where the, where do they finger each other nowadays? I don't think they finger. Do they finger? <laughs> They, they finger. No. Do they wait until they're old enough to write a poem? <laughs> about a dog <laughs> when they're 19. Well, it's like they the little toddlers watch porn nowadays, so it's like they probably just go straight to face fucking. Do you know that when you read that poem, I was like proud of you thinking you were like finding all these rhyming words at five? <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I'm gone. a late bloomer. Long, gone, we'll do it. It's close enough. <laughs> I think we all have late bloomer qualities in our I'm own a, way. I, Extremely maybe. Late bloomer. Because I put the sex stuff, I early felt bloomer. like early, but almost like forced early. Yeah, not like good. Yeah, not in a good way early. Um, but with other things, oh my God, such a late bloomer. There are a lot of things I'm just learning even at this age that I'm just like, what the fuck? I didn't, I can I tell you what I did for the very first time? I'd like to admit something and this might sound really silly. I went through a drive through for the very first time three weeks ago. Oh, my really? first time alone. Which what? Place? And it was, I was all the way in Corona because I was like visiting this like factory out there and I was falling asleep and I was like, I just need something to drink. So I went through a Starbucks drive through and when I got to the thing, I was like, I don't know how to do this. I don't I've never, Starbucks count. I've never done this before. How have you never, I don't know, how do I know you? How do I host a podcast with you? You've never had done a drive through Myself. I've been through a drive through <laughs> with other people as like the driver okay, or a passenger, never. but I never have done it alone. Are you getting triggered? Are you remembering a certain Taco Bell order? What? Wait, what? Do you remember when you ordered so many things on Taco Bell that you got? Oh, that everyone hated me. You got time? bullied. Yeah. I know. <laughs> now I can handle those things. Come for me. I don't care. I have annoying ass orders. I oh. get it. But I'm special. But again, I'm 38, and that was the first time I ever did something. And I remember I drove home with so much like wind in my sails. What'd you get? What order did you get? Yeah, I got the sous vide egg bites, mm -hmm. and then I got a breakfast sandwich and a decaf coffee. And yeah, I oh, drove home, like listening to Maggie Rogers and thinking, am I an adult? And it, I felt different, all because of a drive through I actually relate to that when I was in high school, the first time I did a drive through myself, like you do feel like a grown up. I mean, I had it at a better, t like more appropriate time. And I <laughs> did get a chocolate cake shake from Portillo. But you drove yourself there? Yeah, and it, it's like so empowering, right? 
Guys, I I don't know how to relate to this. I mean, <laughs> I was like, we were getting Taco Bell every day. What is? But by yourself is a big deal. By yourself, I do like a nice road trip by yourself. You know what I do at Taco yeah. Bell bathrooms. You know, I have a good time. I wake up. <laughs> I get ready to write some papers and drive. You know. Well, that's the thing. It's like. I've traveled alone so much in my life. Like I've done so many things it's solo. Fun to go alone. But I'm like, how the fuck have I not done this basic ass thing? Technically, you're not alone. They're there helping you. Yeah, you're it's right. a connection. Thanks, Annie. I um yeah, I do like a drive-through. It does piss me off when you are walking by a drive-through and they don't allow you to walk through it. I always thought the I same. Piss me off. That's a little silly, isn't it? It's just like, come on. Yeah, I've I have been on money. The pegs you of have a food. bike, and I've been. Served at a drive. You have, yeah, on a bicycle. Wait, that's alone. You You've know how to ride a no on the peg on, on the peg. Bike. Yeah, on a date. No, it wasn't a date. <laughs> Did you fall off? That's a very like no cholo culture thing. It's really cute. Thank you. It I've definitely been, cool. been on a lot of pegs. Yeah, it <laughs> on is, bikes. Yeah. Have you ever been pegged? I've mm, just fucked in the ass, like classic pegged. way. <laughs> have not pegged. Not have you ever that, pegged? No. Have you? I haven't. I had to wear a strap on for girl code once. That was exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to it. But all the producers, like, I I posted like a clip of me talking about it on stage because I was like put the strap on and I was like slapping everything off tables. I was like <laughs> slapping them in the face. Like I was slap. Like I went. Cra I was like, oh my god, guys. Like I get it. I see why you guys <laughs> have to put your penises places. Like it's crazy. It's like a you have a sword, and um. And so the produ I posted it, and then all of the producers who are like still following me, like we were there, we were slapped. This happened. This is real. Validated. Which one's mine? Your sexual <coughs> the when you assaulted everyone with your <laughs> fake penis. I did. They put it on me. It's their fault. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's a really silly thing when people like don't allow you to just go through a drive through. I don't know if it's like a it's like a oh maybe it's they think it's dangerous because a car is going to like come by oh. and like, you know knock you from the boat i don't know Probably that has to be it yeah but... yeah but it's like you're losing money i want to but also the people who work there don't care about the money but don't you think it's a little bit classist yeah because it's like i don't fucking have a car to drive through here and i'm listen hungry. i'm barefoot and hungry and sometimes the drive through is anything <laughs> that's open and not the inside no i know so it's like what am i, I hate do? when it's only the drive through yeah let me eat i'm hungry <laughs> i if it's the choice between going inside and the drive through how are you ever not just choosing drive through I will go in. I need, sometimes you just need to be like, can you get this for me? Waiting in your car, it's like you'd have less control. Oh, the car is the safe space. There's an ultimate control. There's people to meet inside. <laughs> people to chat with. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. Oh, shoot. Me. I think it's mostly for Kalila because it doesn't really apply to us, but like, would you rather be a nude model in an art class or do stand-up comedy? Um, today? Yeah. Well, not with like, your period shouldn't affect the decision, but. Um, probably a nude model. Really? Yeah. Stand-up comedy is, 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 it's absolutely terrifying. It's not, it's not for me. You don't think I've tried going to open mics and Bobby was like, you should just try it just to see how I feel. And so I would go a couple of times and I'm like, I fuck, I don't have, I don't feel that thrill. I don't feel that pride. I don't feel like that W and you like, no, it was, it was absolutely awful for me. I think that makes sense. Like, I feel like most people would say that I was thinking about it because when I was in my first year of college, I did like a nude naked modeling for an art class once and i like that was everyone arrested for their drawings <laughs> this is kitty porn what is this i what did they all use like those little like golf pencils <laughs> <laughs> well it's actually goes back to something you were saying at the beginning of the episode wait like, before that how are you posed how many poses i think it was two poses and they were i Red was Bowl? bread bowl <laughs> <laughs> i think i just kind of like stood there like i actually i think i was like like this or something because i remember like my one leg was forward and did you spread or did you i did not and spread i did not spread <laughs> um were, were you feeling like self-conscious and like regretting so i was really nervous about doing it she can't ride a bike she's naked in front of a whole class okay <laughs> but i had read in madonna's biography that she had done this when she was like a struggling mm -hmm. singer dancer and i was like i have to do everything madonna did and so i signed up and i was nervous but i was like i can do whatever i'm just gonna do it and while i was there i think i was fine 
obviously standing for a long time is a lot harder than I thought it would be. But then at the end, they're like, oh, you can like walk around the class and see what everyone drew. And the, oh. the most distinct memory I have is fucking looking at my thighs and being like, oh my God, they don't really look like that dude. Like I was like mad at the ki the students because I was like, I can't believe they, because my thighs looked like real thighs and not sticks. Were they high school? No, it was college. <laughs> it was the college kids, but yeah, I don't, but now I would never do that again. I would, that would be so scary. I, um, I used to go to the like drink and draw this thing in Brooklyn where it was like my friend Tim Kent, amazing artist, was my teacher there. He's so fucking good. Um, I will buy something from you one day, I promise. But he, um, so it's like you would go to this place in Brooklyn and you would pay $10 and there was like unlimited Pabst Blue Ribbon and like chips and stuff. And I don't know if you brought your, I think they had the the drawing supplies and stuff and they would just have like a nude model and it was so fun. But I never was the model. I would rather be fucking shot in the head yeah. than have the bullet turn around and go back through the hole. <laughs> Same hole. Yes. That, you can draw that hole. You're not drawing the, I, am, I just don't like, for me, it's like, I'm na like, I am naked a lot and my windows are open and people are seeing me naked often. But the idea that everyone is staring at me naked. And the details. And, they're, and they need to look at, at, yeah, there's no like, um, this is my side. You, you know? know, I find that really interesting that um, I kind of feel similarly when no, my windows are open and like, I've been with people in the house who are like, Kalila, you're naked. They can see it. And I don't care. Yes. Either. There was, they used to say that. I'm like, look, if he's looking out his window, that's him looking out his window trying to look. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's not. Right. I, I don't feel as like conscious about it because it's just like, it's like just living life. I have no relationship with this home. kid. Yeah. I'm not related to him. I'm not going to molest him. Like, also, there's it's nothing. Like they, it's probably the best. They want to see. They're it's looking. probably the best case scenario for him to just see the, the... But you know what I was thinking about? You know in Friends how they have like, they had like the fat naked guy? No, I didn't watch Friends. It's we so weird. We were a Friends house. We were a Seinfeld house. You, you never watch both. Friends? I don't think you can be both. You can you be both. You can. I think it's Friends or Seinfeld. It's Christian and Jewish. That is true. You're both, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think you should watch Friends. I think you would like it. It's really good. It's really funny. I don't know. It was crazy. I remember being in fifth grade, like, this show is so good. My teacher was like, your parents let you guys watch Friends? Oh, that's weird. It was really good. But but um, they had like this this fat, hairy, naked neighbor mm -hmm. that they would always see. Was there an Esther? I just feel like that's a no, but I'm just saying name has. No, I'm just <laughs> saying like, no, it was a man. It was like a uh, balding man. But um, who's maybe could be an Esther. But I realized like I am I'm that now. Oh, you're I'm, like, not old, that. naked, na naked neighbor. <laughs> so far from I that. still feel like they're lucky to see it, but. This I was a that. Cheers home. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. And a Frasier home. That was my grandpa. You were a Frasier home? That is such a grandpa yeah. house. That's because your dad was old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frasier, that Frasier. is the first sign from old sperm if you're a Frasier and house. And Norm from Cheers. Yeah, Cheers. Wow. Also Friends, though. But also Seinfeld. So a little bit of everything. That's why this this show works. <laughs> I'm telling you to the to the death. I'm a my so called life bitch. If uh, that show had gotten a fucking, did you ever watch it yet? No, my sister watched. It's I was important. always waiting for the TV while that was on. I was just, <laughs> Todd will like bring up Jared Catalano or Jordan Catalano like it's like a thing you can just bring up without like sending me to a whole new world. Mm. Jared Leto, I am not attracted to. Jordan Catalano is like. I'm fucking keegling right now, guys. Like, I am so, like, in love with this illiterate, greasy-haired, fucking high school asshole. It's, like, crazy. I just... But, well, oh, that's imprinting. Like, how crazy. He imprinted on you that but it's hard. Not the lean. That's it has, me. That looks, I see me it, right You're there. so <laughs> off, bitch. There's nothing. Me there's, in a flannel and a no. choker. He can write a <laughs> Bro, that's fucking me. Esther, I'm so sad for you. <laughs> It's like you are pretty. Like I think you're. You don't know that you're pretty, but that is a different level. I did watch Romeo and Juliet again. Was it still the good? The Baz Luhrmann one. It once something imprints on you, it's never not good. I know. Yeah. I used to go to the library, and was I stealing? I think I was stealing. Yeah, I think I would go to the library and I would steal. Yes, I would. Oh, this is bad to steal from a library, guys. But I would go would to steal, the library. Though? The magazines. Oh, for and pictures, just, not for reading. For pictures, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
reading. <laughs> read the magazine. There was one article about huffing that I remember cutting. Out. <laughs> what magazine? And me and my it? friend. It was like seventeen YM. My um, yeah, my friend and I had like a joint book that we'd send to each other, and it was like we made this pact we would never huff. <laughs> Because it was like someone died from huffing in People magazine. That was a really sweet went. childhood promise. No huffing. Listen, no huff I did not. No listen, huffing. I just tell you, I did not follow through on oh that. Oh my one. God. <laughs> I'm a you huffer. You huffed? I'm a huffer. What is huffing? It's like whipped cream. Yeah. I don't like paint and huff, but if there's a whipped cream bottle around, yeah. it ain't coming out with air. <laughs> <laughs> it's huffing also with the. Um, no, with like paint. I don't yeah, like glue, like duster yeah. and stuff. I don't do that shit. Oh, okay. I don't like things that make your brain squeak. It, it squeaks when you... It's squeaky sounding, like smoking wet, like weed that's dipped. I know. Can you look up what wet is? Because it's not like actually formaldehyde, but that's what they said it was. It's, it's PCP, like, right? Getting yeah, but wet. what is it dipped in actually? Getting wet. Let me see. It's not actually formaldehyde. That's Sherm. Sherm. Pete knows. But, yeah. but we called it wet. We called it wet. Oh, that's just putting like weed, embalming um, fluid, and tobacco. Yeah, and embalming fluid. Jesus. Yeah, that's what we used to smoke. Really? So it's basically a spliff dipped in. I don't know that we actually had cigarettes, tobacco in it. Oh, there was no tobacco in it. In ours, no. Like, you can, but I'm sure most people just use weed. Yeah, we were just. Jesus. And I was just my brain feel a little squeaky. A little doesn't squeaky. it seem like embalming fluid would be like a good, like alternative to Botox? Like if it like keeps you as you are. You dab it on. Would well, you already have some in your but room it's toxic, for all the right? body parts? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Esther's like, I got some handy. Do you think it'll help? We find out <laughs> Esther's secret. <laughs> Why she looks so young? <laughs> She's, those baths are not with water. I'll tell you that. Those those monthly baths. Do you get embalmed <laughs> weekly. That would be. Spooky. You're coming in quite greasy after your big thing about how you are clean now. Ugh, I. That's so unfair. You put pressure on yourself. I literally washed my hair yesterday. Why is it greasy already? Because you're doing a lot of this and in your hands are real greasy. Mm. How often do you wash your hair? Um, so I'm doing this new thing where I don't really do things like how often, you know, I just kind of like as I remember, or as I feel it. You're starting this now? <laughs> She's doing intuitive washing. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to play it off like you had a plan before. <laughs> <laughs> well, my whole life, I always was like, am I am I a person who bathes at night or in the morning? Am I a person who bathes every, every day? I totally know what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, it's so annoying. Do you remember, I think with like eating stuff too, it's like how fucking hard breakfast always was. Yes. Yeah. Breakfast was always like this thing. I had to just like release breakfast. Like, yeah, oh, release it. For breakfast. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think that's like um, one of the signs of any disordered anything is like ritualistic. Like, what am I? How do I identify as either this or that? You know, like there's always like a ritual involved. Mm -hmm. It's like if you feel some type of way, just jump in the shower. Who cares? But that's what or I'm saying. Bathtub. When you wake up in the middle of the night, if you have the cash, don't like spend your savings. I want to try that tonight. It feels so good because you're told to not impulsively do things in life. You know, like people are like, that's like bad. But I'm like, I'm leaning into every fucking impulse and I'm just going to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> please my don't lean is, into I, every impulse. I, I, I don't want to like burst your guys bubble about what you think of me but my my impulses are not violent or negative it's just funny to make fun of you and to threaten <laughs> your structure your small structure I hope you have an impulse I like to make you feel unsafe on earth I do wonder that Annie because like like my whole life I've fought impulses because I can be super impulsive and I've just I've prided myself in being like, I'm less impulsive now. I'm grown. But I'm like, have I robbed myself off of what certain What if there's joy? a bunch of shit I want to do? If I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like spinning and I go, you know what I really want to do? I want to buy a jacket. Look at me now, bitch. <laughs> That's a fucking epic outfit. This was this would not be a purchase during the day, okay? This is a midnight purchase. <laughs> and Todd's always like, Todd will be like, oh God, she's shopping. Oh, that's cute. But it's great. And then they come and I'm excited and it's fucking great. There's no like, I'm a grown up. There's no one telling me not to do this anymore. So I'm just going to see how it goes. And then I, but I, then it's like, if it becomes too much of a habit and I'm like, oh, I'm not liking the things I'm getting, then I won't do it. But how often are you waking up in the middle of the night? Like what time do you wake up to? 
I usually have a second wind. I usually go to a sleep. second wind in the I middle do. of the night. It's just so funny. I'm so energetic. It's I so know. weird. It's this just is the so crazy weird. thing about you. I, I'm telling you, like, there's been periods of times in our lives where I feel like I talk to you late at night and then it's 7 a.m. You call me the next day and you're like, I already had a day. And you pick up too, bitch. Don't you? <laughs> Good girl. Um, yeah, no, I um, I don't know. I'm excited. I like my life. I'm you're happy. not to make like this to like. Up. The Seinfeld episode, but that's like when Kramer was experimenting with sleep schedules and he would like sleep in like four hour chunks and then have like four hours awake in the middle of the night for it. I think uh, Kramer needed a little more sleep when he did that laugh factory. So oh, <laughs> he may have been a little, <laughs> a little tired then. Middle of the night, another middle of the night um, fiasco is Yeah, don't follow Barr, all right? your impulses. Thanks for bringing up Kramer. Don't follow all of them. Roseanne Barr was the middle of the night. Um, oh, when she left, but right? she was Ambien. Oh, she was Ambien. I don't take sleeping pills. Yeah, I don't either. I'm not a sleeping pill bitch. I just did it for anal. That's it. <laughs> oh. <like> that. <laughs> That's yeah. interesting. Well, it's like they said that anal be in. <laughs> well, they say like if you if you force yourself to stay up um, when you take um, Your sleep aids, juicy. You, you start to, it has like a kind of a hallucinogenic effect. And it did. And which led to... Yeah. A relaxed butthole. A relaxed butthole and a very positive experience because the, the the time that I did anal before that, I had like a fever that night and it was like horrible. Like I went into shock, I think. Well, I just never feel like the sleeping pills, like you're, I don't feel like you're really sleep. It's like you're faking yourself into thinking you were sleeping. Like you're not getting I've like actual that. rested sleep. It's like, so why am I doing this? Mm. I'd rather know I'm going to be tired the next day than not. I had a boyfriend who actually helped me with this because he was like kind of like... He was a real night guy too. And I used to get so mad at myself when I couldn't sleep. And that I remember the day in third grade when my teacher, I might've said this on here before because it is like definitely a core memory. My third grade teacher was like, we have a really important test tomorrow. Make sure you get sleep. I, that was the moment my sleeping problem started because it was a pressure of having yeah. to do something. Yeah. So then when I wouldn't be sleeping, I'd be like, fuck, I'm not sleeping, I'm not sleeping. And it would be like, my day tomorrow is gonna be ruined. It would be like this future like dread. Yeah. And now... I had a boyfriend who was like, he's like, you're talented, you're good, you're able to like work with no sleep. He's like, whatever sleep you get tonight will not, you can still pull it off. So him doing that was good for me because it released this sort of like pressure of like things having to be like, I have to sleep at hours or if I don't, you know, it's going to ruin everything because then I'm like setting myself up. So now I really don't even look, if I'm having trouble sleeping or if there's something like I do want to get sleep. I never look at the time because I don't want to like be That's starting a really good it. trick. Yes. So it's like I don't even know how it's much like it, the, it's you like as much as you can. It's the same psychology behind saying like, you know, like no, no foods. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. Yeah. Because then that's all you're thinking about. If you're saying like get enough sleep, get enough sleep. All you're thinking about is not, not yeah, not sleeping, basically. No, or you're worrying so, about not you're getting so enough right. Sleep. Like the the no no foods. Like I can never have if someone's doing a diet. We're like I can never have bread. Any time I've ever tried that by three o'clock that day, I've had the most bread she I've ever had. <laughs> oh, oh, like I truly, or like oh, I'm giving up sugar. Three o'clock that day, I have three pints of ice cream in my freezer that I just picked up and I'm going. It's like it do you really wake up in the morning and you're like I'm totally gonna eat bananas today. No, would so you cannot eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't live in like absolutes like that. I think it's not healthy. And well, you're gonna swing you back. Into, yeah. Remember when I did my uh, my master cleanse? You're like, good luck, bitch. There will be a swing back. Yeah. Never been skinny since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that was the beginning of Big Annie. <laughs> Big girl time. What was anything? the master cleanse? It was cayenne and it. It's just blast your asshole. It's just like, hey, do you want to fire your asshole up for fucking three weeks or whatever? It's like 10 days. What was in it? Like lemon water it's with lemon cayenne? Lemon water, cayenne, I'm and maple syrup. Oh, maple syrup. So you had a little bit of a blood sugar boost, but that's it? But I will pointless. tell you, it is. Oh the, here's the crazy thing. You do realize, like, you could survive in the wilderness for a long time. Like, you do realize, like, oh, I, like, my body is, like, on a yeah, and I, I see a benefit on occasionally like forcing like, you know, when David Sinclair talks about um, doing these like occasional fasts yeah. to kind of force cell death for the cells that are kind of like no longer useful, but they need to be like killed off. 
certain things like that make sense to me. But to do like a week long master cleanse to put your body into starvation mode for no for, fucking reason. It can't be for like you can't be doing those things for any sort of like weight loss or like it has to be like there's spiritual cleanses people do. There's like fasting you do yeah. to sort of like as a sacrifice to like whatever program you're doing or whatever but those but. things is still for me like having been disordered a lot in my life yeah. is still an absolute i can't work with like if you put me in like the confines of like you this is the only thing you can drink a day it's like already i'm mm. spinning out yeah also i remember in high school reading in in like us weekly or whatever beyonce used the master cleanse to look to lose weight for the her role in dream girls so it, it just I'm just like angered by that, that that was like advertised to us as like, this is how you lose weight. And this is what the celebrities are doing. Oh, my God. Do you remember how badly you wanted to know what the celebrities like? Yes. That? What, you were like, I want to know every morsel that goes into your mouth. And the thing that's so funny about that is like you get older. I feel like once you hit like 30, like mid 30s, early 30s, it's like you realize like everybody's so fucking different that there's not mm -hmm. any way what one other person does would ever be the thing for you anyway. If I, I were to have done like, a, this is what I eat in a day, they would know that I ate a really dry piece of bread with turkey slices, you know, over my sink this morning because I was in a rush. Yeah, like, that's don't not think real, yeah. like, oh, this is what I, and I boil this. I fuck off. Like, thank you. I'm sure on a good day I can do all of that. But like, that's just not how life works. You know, it's like, it's so unrealistic. I don't watch any of that shit. I don't even like, I don't allow my brain to absorb that. I don't allow my brain to look at the positive re results of semi-glutides or the, the new whatever. She really trend. wants to talk about these semi-glutides. I just don't. Because it's like, I- What I, are they? <laughs> what? That's you brought it up to right? Oh, Zempix. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I just- Oh, you already knew that, didn't you? Because only because she brought it up earlier, not before. That's what they're called. I didn't know that. Are what? Sure? It's. You've been looking into it? I've def. Oh, I'm a. You're the most Kardashian of us here. So. Yeah, no, of course I know about Ozempic and I know like I've. I've Esther, I dare you. The amount of I questions I've how asked people. You could be. <laughs> I dare you. To what? If Esther came to Zumbic, it would be hell. You would look like, can you pull up the David Cross, the um, the Mr. Show, the guy who gets burned in the, in the um, it's like their Metallica parody. Can you just look up Metallica parody? I 100% would not go on it. But, but can I, I just show you exactly yes. what you would look like if you did it? <laughs> but I don't want people to say I'm just I want to know everything about it. Oh my this god. This would be you play it, play it. This is so they're a band and this is like their favorite band. Oh my god. Like, that oh my fell god. into he fell into a, a thing of acid oh yeah. when he was listening to their song yeah. Jump into Acid, Jump into Acid. Hey buddy, try it out. And so they're like oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ozempic. It's that's Esther on Ozempic. I dare you, bitch. <laughs> 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 I cannot look at that. I see myself. You're like, I feel so fat. <laughs> yes. Oh, Lord. But if I you're on. I already watched that fucking sketch. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. You guys, thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Trash Tuesday. It's oh, been a pleasure. Oh, God. Um, if you don't need to be on Ozempic, don't get on Ozempic. Also, because don't get your buccal fat removed. Annie and I can't really fairly answer this question. I really am genuinely curious. Please comment. Would you rather pose nude for an art class or do stand up comedy? Can I tell you, I posed nude for an art teacher and it made me a stand up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> you just picked my entire like life, my entire like storyline of how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> So let us know what you'd rather do and we'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Bye.